Hey guys, welcome to Enzyme Mental. Before we begin, hit that subscribe button below and click the bell so you don't miss any notifications. And today I wanted to show you how magnesium supports a dynamic immune response and also why magnesium deficiency, which is very common today, can be deadly in the case of a systemic viral infection. So, during a viral infection, macrophages and other immune cells capture the invading virus and release a torrent of cytokines and chemokines, primarily interleukin-6 and C-reactive protein. An increase in interleukin-6 in the lungs particularly can lead to both hypertension, or high blood pressure, and scarring of the lung tissue, which is also known as pulmonary fibrosis. Elevated cytokines deplete the body's antioxidant defenses, leading to increased inflammation and even more tissue damage. So where does magnesium fit into all of this? Magnesium's well-known status as a natural calcium channel blocker inhibits calcium influx in immune cells like B cells and T cells. These are both primary players of the immune system, and magnesium's natural inhibition of calcium then significantly limits the actions of nuclear factor kappa B, cytokine production, C-reactive protein, and overall inflammation. Without this magnesium-driven mediation, unhindered nuclear factor kappa B activation leads to a sharp increase in the inflammatory cytokine interleukin-6. People with a magnesium deficiency also often have low potassium, and an existing magnesium deficiency can seriously impair potassium absorption, so you need to address the magnesium deficiency first. Specific to the immune system, magnesium is a necessary cofactor for the synthesis of immunoglobulins, immune cell adherence, and the activation of macrophages. Magnesium also reduces the expression and release of substance P and other pro-inflammatory molecules by modulating nuclear factor kappa B activity. Conversely, magnesium deficiency seriously impairs the function of T cells while also increasing platelet aggregation and adhesiveness, imp impairing the growth of endothelial cells and promoting blood clots. Also, a sustained magnesium deficiency forces our mitochondria to release stored magnesium, which hinders the function of ATP or adenosine triphosphate, which, as I've told you before, is dependent on adequate magnesium intake for optimal function. Vitamin D, as you know, is largely useless without magnesium, because magnesium is required to convert vitamin D from its storage form, calcidiol, into its active form, calcitriol. But vitamin D and magnesium actually have somewhat of a symbiotic and even reciprocal relationship, like so many other nutrients in the body, as the performance of magnesium is actually dependent on vitamin D because vitamin D stimulates intestinal absorption of magnesium while also preventing the excretion of magnesium through the kidneys. So as you can see, a deficiency of one very much augments the deficiency of the other. And this is one reason why you should be taking both vitamin D and magnesium every day. During the course of a severe infection, the increase in energy consumption and demand for ATP and magnesium can steadily decrease the effectiveness of vitamin D's immune benefits. There are plenty of magnesium preparations available, but some definitely absorb better than others. Magnesium glycinate and magnesium malate are two such forms. And unlike many other magnesium preparations, both glycinate and malate are exceptionally well retained, primarily in the muscle tissue. The standard dose of magnesium is typically around 400 milligrams per day, but I've said for years that a thousand milligrams of magnesium per day is much more appropriate. I would also take your magnesium with either a B-complex or some additional vitamin B6, which greatly improves magnesium absorption in the intestines. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy.